So there has been a lot of talk in the RV community recently about is the full-time RV lifestyle over? Is it dead? Has it run its course? Well, actually, full-time and part-time. That's true. A lot of talk. Yes. In this video, we're going to talk about that. We're going to tell you what we think. We're going to tell you whether we're quitting anytime soon. So make sure you stick around and we'll let you know. Hey guys, it's Chris and Katrina with our Everyday Getaway. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, Katrina and I have been full-time RVing for a little over two years now. And we by no means are experts, not at all. But we've garnered a little experience. And we do videos based on travels, having a good time, having fun. And we'll also like to do campground reviews and videos that just talk about the RV lifestyle in general. So if you like what you see here, please consider subscribing to the channel and stick around. We hope you enjoy this video. Now, when we decided to go full time, we did the whole typical thing. We sold our house, sold everything, and we were committed to going full time. That was right about the time of COVID when the RV industry saw a boom. It was a big boom. Wow, right? Yeah. And a lot of people at that time decided to go RVing full-time at least because they could work remotely and it was a great time to see the country, that you could still social distance, have your own area, your own room. You weren't checking in at hotels. You weren't too close to you know your neighbors. Perfect. Yeah, you, you guys know there were a lot of restrictions as far as traveling, whether it was on a plane or at a hotel. And it was just much easier to get a camper and become... A full-time yeah. RVer and people loved it people were it was great and we got caught up into it but now that COVID has come and gone a lot of that desire that want has seemed to wane and diminished quite a bit I agree and the question is has that run its course do you think it's run its course and with the current economic conditions of the country right now it's not as easy or it's not as doable if you will to buy an RV. Especially a new RV. you got to take into consideration the interest rates. And then even if you have the deposit to put down, your monthly costs are... Payments. Payments, yes, are just astronomical. I want to take a minute to tell you about the sponsor of this video, RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Long before Katrina and I were RVers, we had a mattress by Brooklyn Bedding in our sticks and bricks for years and we loved it, it was great. So when we were looking to upgrade our mattress in an RV, it only made sense for us to reach out to Brooklyn Bedding. Why? Because they make RV specific mattresses and man, did they come through. They did a fantastic job. The quality and comfort is second to none. So much so, we decided to upgrade the mattress in our small Class C and once again, without fail, they came through. Now they have a 120 day sleep trial. What does that mean? That means you can try out the mattress for up to 120 days. If you're not happy with it, you can send it back and they'll take care of you. They also have a 10 year warranty and they have free shipping in the continental United States. Now they also offer a great deal of accessories so you can get your pillows, your sheets, your blankets, your weighted blankets, and even your mattress covers. You want to visit rvmattress.com forward slash getaway for your 25% savings off your next mattress using the code word getaway. But wait, hold on, there's more. If you're watching this video by mid-February, they are offering a huge President Day sale, 30% off site wide so you want to up your sleeping experience this upcoming rv season don't miss out on that chance once again we'd like to thank rvmattress.com by brooklyn bedding for sponsoring this video visit rvmattress.com forward slash getaway for your 25 percent savings off of your next mattress everything has gone up in cost and especially for campground owners. So what are they going to do? They're going to pass that cost on to us. So whether it's RV repairs or whether it's RV campgrounds, whatever it may be, the price and the cost of everything has increased, making it less desirable and, and affordable. Uh, yes. Yes. And a lot of you folks who are on the road working full time, some of those companies have said, that's it. Come on back. 
you have to come back into the office. That's right. Making it less desirable or less doable well, for them to be on the road full time. The cost has been a big factor in, dis in, in that decision. Another thing that you, to consider is the construction of the RVs. Ugh. And from what we're, we're told, like you said, we're no expert or anything, but it's not what it used to be, especially during the COVID years. They're saying stay away from certain you know, ones at certain times. Much of the manufacturing that goes into these RVs, we can't speak to that. We don't go and we don't inspect it and we don't look at the overall construction, but the thought process is that suffered during the COVID years because they were just pumping these things out left and right and you saw a diminish in the quality of RVs. Now, to be honest with you, when we started RVing in 2016 and we watched a great deal of content, many of the content creators said the same thing back then, that the quality of some of the RVs weren't that great. So I don't know, I'm not qualified to say that it got worse during the COVID years, but it appeared from what the talk is that that was the case. So you take in the, the price of everything and the cost of everything, and now the construction and the quality that the manufacturers have gone into, it can be problematic because it leads to buying an RV and constantly going into the shop and having taken care of. Because if you don't have a good uh, skill set and you don't know how to work on your RV, it can get very, very costly. Not to mention the delays that it would take for you to have your RV service. So these are some of the things that people are coming into and it's quite possible the people that got into RVing during the COVID years are figuring this all out. And then when the surface sound good, it sound fun, it sound great and exciting. And let's be honest, full-time RVing is not all sunshine and rainbows. It's, it's not. not. No, it's not. It's just not. It's not. Sorry. There is a lot of the downside you don't see. So if you're watching content creators, like ourselves, mm -hmm. we try to do a good job of showing you everything, but maybe you're under this these delusions of grandeur that it's all fun. And most of and us, and it's really not. And most of us that full time RV don't really do it for more than about five years. I would yeah, that's the finish. average lifespan of a full time RV. We don't show you a lot of the downtime, and we're not complaining. But the reality is, it's not always going out, it's not running around, a vacation. And, and vacation. And yeah. if you do, that gets into a lot of cost and. It's not, it's more, in many ways, it's more expensive to live on the road full time than it is to live in your sticks and bricks. For us, it is anyway. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of that depends on different variables. Now, if you're willing to take advantage of boondocking and take advantage of memberships, you can say, but there's a downside to that as well. So you have to take all those things into consideration. So would you recommend someone who is thinking about full timing? this year to sell everything and go on the road. I would I would not suggest suggest excuse me suggest that. I would suggest keeping your home if you can and maybe doing a part-time thing or if you still have your home renting it out, but I don't think I would sell everything right now. I'd at least wait another year and see how things go. Yeah, we did a video on that the importance of keeping a home base and I'll put a link above. We we just think it's so important in some way if you can to have that home base just in case we run into a situation like we had with COVID or for whatever reason, you know, something you're going to full-time on the road, things happen, things. It could be a health issue. Health you issue. might need to go. You need and, to go back and settle down right. for a while. You want right. to be around family and friends to help you get through that trying time. I think the important thing is if you're going to sell and get on the road, ask yourself, where will you go if things get bad? Do you have a place to go? And I think that's the most important thing when it comes to full-time RVing. It is. And it could be a family or friend, but it's very, very important. So that could be a deterrent to you getting on the road. If you don't have that, don't just assume you're always going to have a place to go because during COVID, many places was were full and it was hard to get into. Maybe another thing with people getting out of this. Now, we don't know anyone personally that has decided to stop full-timing and go back to their sticks and bricks. No. Not yet, no. but there are people out there that have recently done that. And I think it's a cyclical thing. These things are go in cycles. You're going to have your people that eventually drop off and your people that are going to get in. And it's probably always been that way. I think so. Yeah. So yeah. those of you who have been doing this full-time RVing for 10 years or more and you're out there, you know who you are, leave a comment down below and tell us if that's the case based on your experience. But based on our experience of two years full-timing, which is just a drop in a bucket, we have yet to really see anyone say, I'm going back home and I'm done. 
that's it. Another thing also is with the inventory that a lot of dealers are having now, it's the interest rates is still difficult to work out at something to make it happen because and, and they're not really willing to come down much in the price either. So that's a big deterrent. And that's going to be true with the used rig as well. Our advice to you would be to go use first if you can. But keep in mind those rigs that were built during the COVID years. That's yeah. something you want to be mindful of. And you also want to get a third party Have to inspect in. that as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we, based on our experience, can say that people are getting out of it but full time. Now, there's a lot of talk about that going on. Well, there's the talk. But but then also we're finding out there are people that are saying they're full time, but they're really kind of part time, full time. So And that, that's another thing for you part timers out there. You get a rig can you afford to keep those luxury items those toys mm -hmm. and those are usually the first thing to go when you need to make a cutback so those of you who part-time if you're only using your RV for one month out of the year is it worth keeping that RV sitting around for 11 10 11 months yeah just the insurance on it per month it's just sitting there and then you're not using it are things breaking down you know especially diesel you need to keep that thing you need to keep it running eventually you, you shouldn't just let it sit forever from what mm -hmm. we've seen we don't see any issues with campgrounds being no. full they're just they're i mean they're still full well, even if you don't see that they're full, people are not canceling the reservation. So they're still hard to get into because, let's say, a lot of the state parks we see, you can see empty spaces. But if you go up to the front desk or you go online, they're booked completely. People aren't canceling. Based on what we are seeing at the campgrounds we go to, and we go from everywhere, from um, we boondock to Cracker Barrel, yeah. from Thousand Trails up to a nice resort, we're not seeing. We just came from two nice resorts. They were full. So it doesn't appear on from our experience that people are leaving it. But tell us what you guys think. Are you seeing this? Are you yourself saying that's it? I'm done. I'm yeah. getting out. Are we wrong? It's, it's getting out of hand. Right. The, the parks are too expensive. It's just in you know, it's just too much to keep up with. And during these times right now, we're all making cutbacks. I know you and I are doing our best. Well, we're doing the best we can, and it's still not good. Well, also, what I'm hearing is that. There's a lot of, uh, especially the nicer resorts, instead of just putting down a down payment now, they want you to pay the whole thing in advance. And some people just don't have all that money that they're willing to put out a couple thousand dollars 12 months out. They'd rather pay the deposit than they pay the rest when they get yeah, there. So, and, and once again, we've you know. yet to meet, we've met a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Many of them great. They're all good people, to be honest with you. And many of them are full-time RVers. And we've yet to have one say, I'm done. I'm going back home. So that tells you how much... They enjoy this lifestyle and how much we enjoy this lifestyle. So it gets back to the question, are we quitting full-time RVing? Are we? No. She's the boss. Not anytime soon. We're not soon. right now. No. no. We don't see anything in the near future. Next year, well, actually this year, 2024, we have already know what our route is. We not might not have everything booked out yet, but we know what the route is. And then going into 2025, we have a really good idea where we're going to be. We will let you guys know about that at a little further date when we make some more adjustments yeah. and corrections and make sure we're going to do what we want to do. We have some exciting plans coming up. We, you guys know about our trip to Alaska, but later on in the year we have, we're already thinking next year. And that's the thing about being a full-time RVer. You're planning a year out. I'm sure you part-timers would do it as well. But when you're on the road full-time, you definitely need to plan a year out. I know there are those of you who wing it and that's cool. People wing it. They find campgrounds at the last minute they have no issues no problems so tell us what you guys think if you guys like this video please give us a thumbs up if you guys think the industry or the rv boom is coming to an end that it's on the downside or that it's cyclical or that it's no different than what it was 10 years ago leave a comment down below tell us educate us help us out so that we can get a, a better understanding of how all of this thing works yeah and share information with everybody else so that's right. It's a win-win. And, yes. And don't forget about we the RVers. We believe in a strong community. We believe in supporting all RVers. I don't care if you're a full-timer, part-timer, fifth wheel, bada bing, bada yep. boom. I don't care. We're all RVers. It's we a got community. we the RVers. We're a community. Let's stand united. Let's stay together. Let's support one another. Let's not criticize and attack each other because that's one of the things that attracted us to the RV community Absolutely. was is commitment to each other and helping each other out. It's a beautiful thing and we need to spread more positive 
hashtag positive RV living That's out right. there, around there, especially in the YouTube universe with RV content creators. It's really important and we we like to drive that point home. So if you're on board and you believe in We The RVers, come join us, be a part of the Getaway Nation and consider subscribing to the channel. If you like what you saw, hit the uh, subscribe button and the notification bell. You'll be notified every time we release a video. If you like this kind of content where we discuss this issue, Leave a comment down below. Tell us you want more issues. And if you want a rec recommended issue we can talk about, put it down in the comments below. Do we'll, we'll be more than happy to talk about it. This is what we do when we're at a campground, right, with friends? Of course. We all sit around the campfire. We have really nice conversations and discussions. It never gets heated or out of control. It's always good stuff. And then we're just like you guys. Same thing. We sit around and we talk about this. This is why we like to do these kind of videos. We, we just want to have a talk with you guys and share this with you. So there you have it. Remember, guys. Any day you can get away it's a is a great day. day. You guys take care and we hope to see you on the road someday. See you guys.